If you are a landscape photographer and you use Lightroom, then I think you're going to love this video because in the next five minutes, I'm going to show you four hidden features of Lightroom that you probably didn't know, but you should. And these will not only save you a ton of time, but it'll greatly enhance the quality of your processing. So let's jump over to the desktop here so I can show you my first tip, which is on the hidden features of the histogram. Okay, so if you ever wonder what exact tones you are adjusting with the basic panel sliders here, your exposure, highlight shadows, whites and blacks, what exactly am I changing here? The histogram will actually tell you what you are adjusting. When you hover your mouse over a particular slider here in the basic panel, let's go to the highlights. Notice how up in the histogram, certain tonal groups will be highlighted. These ranges represent your five tonal sliders, and this gives you an excellent preview of how many pixels you'll be adjusting with each slider here. So if we go down to the blacks, hover over the triangle, the histogram highlights our deepest shadows, whites will be the brightest highlights. Shadows and highlights are the next step in, and the exposure slider represents your midtones. Now this is actually quite helpful to visualize which pixels are being adjusted because it tells you how much of a difference you'll be making in the lightness of your composition. For example, if you hover over the blacks here and make an adjustment, let's take this slider and let's deepen them to negative 75. Do a quick before and after. And this really isn't making that much of a difference, even though we dropped it 75 points because if we look up at the histogram, not many tones are within that range, that highlighted bracket you now see. However, if we go to the exposure slider here and make the same adjustment, that's a pretty big difference because there are many more tones within that exposure range, the midtones. So even a slight adjustment here in the exposure makes a pretty impactful difference. Now, most images will fall into this bell-shaped histogram where the exposure slider is going to adjust the bulk of your tones. But if you are photographing under high key lighting or at sunset with a backlit subject, that histogram can look a lot different. So being able to visualize how many tones are going to be adjusted with your sliders is very helpful. You can also adjust these tones directly on the histogram itself. Take my mouse up here and let's say I want to adjust this peak. Hover over it, click and hold, drag to the left or the right. And notice how this is actually adjusting the exposure slider down in the basic panel. So whichever way you want to do it, Lightroom gives you several great options here. Okay, tip number two is being able to monitor your color channels. So for this, we're going to have to switch over to a color image. And notice how the histogram looks a lot different now because we are now able to instantly see whether or not you've blown out a specific color. Now I have an entire tutorial on the histogram on my YouTube channel, so I'm not going to dive deep into the histogram for this video. But you can see on the histogram that there are several histogram charts overlaid on each other. The gray one is the average for your entire photograph, but notice how each color channel has its own unique peaks and valleys. Your RGB, red, green, and blue, and CMY, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And this is because each color has their own unique lightness values. So a specific color can be clipped for example, the blues and the shadows, that's very common. Those blues can be underexposed more quickly than other colors in your image. And actually, let's switch to another image here because the color sphere and the value scales affecting the histogram. Okay, with this image here, we can see that the blue channel has a much higher peak than the gray histogram, which is the average, meaning that those blues are going to be underexposed before any other color channel in the image which means that it needs to be monitored in order to preserve detail within that color, so within the sky here. And this is especially useful for when you start to make shifts in the HSL panel or your point curve. And this becomes especially helpful for sunrise and sunset photographs because those environments will typically clip the yellows and the reds and the highlights long before your other colors. Now, if you see that a color channel is being blown out and you want to see where on the image those damaged pixels are as an overlay, you can do that by first turning on your highlight and shadow clipping indicators. These two triangles here in the histogram. Okay, so we have the highlight and shadow clipping indicators on. Go to the exposure slider. We start to overexpose this image. We have blown pixels highlighted in red. Start to underexpose. We have crushed shadows highlighted in blue but this does not tell you which color channel these blown pixels are primarily in, which means you don't know which colors you should be adjusting here in order to bring back more of that missing detail. 
So what you can do, and this is really handy, and pretty much no one knows about it, is that for blown highlights, areas in red, so let's bring the exposure back up here. If you have areas highlighted in red, come down to either the highlights or the white slider. Those control your brighter pixels. Hold down the Alt or Option key and just click on the triangle. You don't have to adjust it, just click on Hold. And now we can see that specific color channels are now being highlighted, indicating which color channels are being primarily overexposed here. Now we see some blotches of white, which means that all the color channels are being overexposed. So if we bring the exposure down to something more normal. We're just starting to clip. Go back to the whites, click and hold. You can see areas of red, yellow, a little bit of blue here and there. Now let's do the same thing for the shadows. Bring the exposure down, start underexposing, click and hold the Alt or Option key, hover your mouse over either the blacks or the shadows, click and hold, and we can now see which color channels are being underexposed. So again, it's the reds and the yellows, a little bit of green, but now you get the picture. In any areas that are in black means that all the color channels are being underexposed. So that is very, very helpful. Okay, so Lightroom tip number three is that you can actually see your lab LAB color values. And not many photographers are aware of this because we are typically monitoring our RGB values. So if I take my mouse, hover over any pixel in the image, notice how right under the histogram we have values for our R, G, and B color channels. So if I go over, let's say this deep blue sky here, my reds are at 32, greens at 34, but of course my blues are all the way up at 56%. But if I go over to the histogram, right click, and select to show lab color values instead, notice I now have LAB values, which is really fantastic, especially if you work in the lab environment over in Photoshop. But even if you don't, I still recommend switching this to show your lab values instead of RGB because this allows you to monitor your L value, which is lightness. This works on a scale of zero to 100 with 100% 100 being pure white and 0% being pure black. So right now my lightness value is at 98.5%, which is almost pure white. If I go down to really deep shadow here, now I'm at only 3.2%. So when you're trying to figure out where a pixel lands on both the color and the lightness spectrum, you can do that by switching over to your white balance adjustment. Just click on the eyedropper here, sample any pixel in the image, and notice how under the histogram we still have the LEB values, but this little preview window that comes up with your white balance adjustment this is giving you the RGB values as well. So you don't have to sacrifice that in order to see your lab values up in the histogram. Just go to the white balance adjustment and you can see both. Now your fourth and final tip that you probably didn't know about Lightroom is on the masking panel. And we're gonna take a look at the masking panel pins. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the masking panel or you otherwise haven't used it all that much, let me tell you, you are missing out. This is the most powerful update that Lightroom has ever received, ever. And it's bringing so much of the incredible power of Photoshop into the more familiar Lightroom interface. This is an absolute game changer. And I know how important masking is to landscape photography in particular. So that is why I put together a completely free course on the masking panel. And this is where I tell you everything you need to know about masking. When to mask and when not to mask, that's just as important as how to mask. And all the different options and selection tools at your disposal. There's no stone left unturned here, and I've had so many photographers tell me that it's the best course they've ever gone through. So I'll give you a link to that course at the end of this video where you can sign up and you can download it completely free. There's no catch whatsoever. All right, so let's jump back to the computer and take a look at those masking panel pins. Okay, so if you've been masking for a while, then you probably know what these are already. With the masking panel active, you see these pins displayed on your image and each pin represent a mask here in the masking panel. And when you hover over a pin, you can see an overlay preview of where this mask is actually affecting. And if you click on a pin, you will activate that mask just as if you clicked it on the masking panel. Now, usually you would just click on the mask in the panel itself, whichever mask you wanna work with. That's the most straightforward way, not with the pins here. However, there's a hidden benefit to using these pins that will save you a ton of time. And it's one of my favorite shortcuts. Let's say you have an image with many masks like this one. Well, maybe you won't have as many, but if you have a dozen or so masks on your image, which is very likely, it can be a bit tiresome to cycle through all of your mask here in the panel, trying to figure out which one you wanna click on in order to work with it. Instead, what you can do is hover your mouse 
over the pins on the image in order to see an instant preview of where this mask is actually affecting. And what's great about this is because the pins are located around the area where the mask originated. So when you're actually working on a photograph and you want to find a mask you already created, you probably know where you started that mask, right? For example, if I did a mask that was outlining just this rock here, I know that the mask started in that area. So when I'm looking at all the pins here, I say, oh great, I see a pin right over this rock. Hover over it, there we go, I found my mask which took me about two seconds to do. If I was just looking at the masking panel over here, hovering over all of these previews, it could take me a while to figure out which one I'm looking for exactly. Especially if it's a very small mask because it'd be hard to tell by these very small thumbnails here in the panel. Trust me, when you have a lot of masks like this, this is definitely a much easier way to find the mask you are looking for. And actually while we're here, let me give you a bonus tip. When you are actually making your adjustments here in the right panel, whether you're in a mask like I am right now, let's find one that has a few different adjustments here. Or if you're working in another panel like the basic panel or your tone curve, it can be difficult to adjust this slider here exactly where you want it to be. Especially if you're working on a laptop or otherwise you don't have a lot of breathing room with your slider. What you can do is first click on the actual number, not the slider, but the number. And then you can use your arrow keys up and down to nudge that number by increments of one. Or if you hold down the shift key, you can adjust it by larger increments. Now the exact number will depend on the adjustment you're making, but it'll be a bigger jump when you hold the shift key. And you can also manually enter the exact number you want. Let's say I want this temperature to be 12. Enter 12, hit enter, and then you are all set. But the key is to make sure to click on the box itself to highlight and activate it. And then you can use either your arrow keys or enter the value manually and you'll be set to go. Okay, so I hope you found these tips helpful, but the bigger point I wanna make here is something that I kind of touched on with the masking panel is that the quality and the simplicity, that's very important too, by the way, both the quality and the simplicity is dependent on how well you can isolate the area you want to adjust. And that becomes exponentially easier with that masking panel. And I know how important this is, so that's why I put together that free course I mentioned earlier. It's called Lightroom Behind the Mask, and you can download your copy completely free by visiting the link up in the description for this video, or maybe it's below it. And I'm sure there's a button around here somewhere. It's no strings attached, 100% complimentary. Just sign up with the email, and I'll send it right over to you. And if you'd like to go beyond the masking panel, I do have a premium training program called The Darkroom for Landscapes. And this is where I dive deep into everything I know about both Lightroom and Photoshop. And it's just for landscape photography. And I created this especially for photographers who are passionate about their craft. And they want to create more expressive photographs that they're really proud of. And so they have this one central resource where they can go and get all their questions answered about processing nature and landscape photographs. So that's what I created here. And it's an all-inclusive package that contains all of my courses. And this is the best part. Also has direct one-on-one -on -one mentorship with me where I answer all of your questions. And there's just so much included in this program. So I don't want to detail it all here because then the video will take forever. But if you are interested in learning more about what you get in this program and when I offer it, because I only open it up a few times a year. There will be a link to that below this video where you can learn more and ask me any questions about the darkroom for landscapes. All right, I hope you enjoyed these Lightroom tips and make sure to sign up for that free masking course and I will see you in the next video.